will be the next funniest mom in America? I'm just letting y'all know right now, if you touch me, you're gonna get pregnant when you get home. I have two children. I have a five-year-old and a three-year-old, right? The five-year-old is an intellectual. The three-year-old is a thug. It's just how it is. <laughs> how you gonna be a thug with a speech impediment, though? That's what I'm trying to figure out. So the three-year-old is like, Mommy, Hadaya pit on me. And Hadaya will stand back and say, oh, What are you talking about? Are you trying to say spit? <laughs> Work that thing out. Now? It is time to announce the five that will be one step closer to being the funniest, the funniest mom, mom in America. America. All right. Our first finalist is Michelle. Okay, I don't know what just happened, but I'm all for it. All I know is the baby's still inside and all is well. I think I got a four-year-old that's preoccupied with her vagina. I don't know what that's about. <laughs> Mommy. This is my vagina. <laughs> Mommy, I have a vagina, you have a vagina. And I don't know why she got staying like this. I don't know what this is about. Tell me y'all got babies that go to school with all kinds of kids. <laughs> don't you let them let them white kids turn them out. You understand me? Don't you let Finnegan and Bailey and them turn them out. And they always having conversation with their babies. It ain't that much to talk about, player. For real, it ain't, it ain't never gonna be that serious. We gotta have a discussion about nothing I tell you to do. You understand what I'm saying? Finnegan. Finnegan, mommy doesn't like that. Mommy's very angry, Finnegan. Finnegan, do you want mommy to count? Fin Finnegan be like, I don't care what you do, mom, you're an asshole. I don't care what you do, mom, you're an asshole. Can you count in Japanese? Uh, twang, 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 twang. But you know, the truth is, you know, they think black folks hit their kids. We don't really hit our kids. We do something even more antagonizing than hit. We do that. <laughs> we don't need to hit our kids. We got emotional. What? Can I tell you, sit, sit down. And I love, I'm gonna tell you something right now, but I love brothers. I love them hard working brothers with dirt under their nails and then work the extra double to pay, you know, two months of tuition. I like them brothers. Cause see, had them brothers been on the flight 9-11, there wouldn't have been no, wouldn't have been nothing, no terrorism. Uh, excuse me, Miss Lady, excuse me, Miss Lady, we got a preservation, excuse me, we got a preservation. <laughs> These are brothers on the flight. Then here come Habib, he's serious about his terrorism, he real serious about it. Here come Habib. I am not playing with you. <laughs> I do not like your country, I'm going to take the plane down. What's the first thing a brother do when he in a situation that's unfamiliar to him? Ah -ha! Woo! Ah -ha! Ah -ha! Oh, snap, get your boy. Get your boy. You don't understand, he ain't trying to see me, son. Get your boy. The laughter's let you know there's something about to jump off in a minute. I'm trying to help y'all out, white folk. If you ever see a black man do like this, see, see, this, see, this is what I'm talking about. And if he say, woo, it's on. He hit himself. He hurting himself first. Then you next, boo. That's all I'm saying. Whitney credits God and her family for giving her the strength to kick Bobby to the curb, ditch the drugs, and reclaim her career. I need a crackhead husband who used to be famous so that I can blow up. She got a huge assist from label legend Clive Davis, who pushed Whitney to get back in the spotlight. Clive came to her and said, it's time for you to sing again. And she said, you think so? And that crack voice, you think so? And she came back. And we're all just so happy for Whitney. And we love you. And we love that you have good wigs now. And you have a stylist again. We're excited. Can't wait to see what's going to happen next. It was a private situation turned public spectacle. She should have moved them bangs and butted them right in the head. She'd have knocked them smooth out because that head ain't nothing to play with. With Father Joe Jackson's bizarre self-promotion on the BET Awards red carpet. This dude is an idiot walking with the S curl, it's over, I'm done. I'm thinking, why did they have to take him? They could have took Joe. But nobody missed Joe. I've been doing stand-up comedy about eight, nine years. Used to be a doctoral candidate in school psychology, took a leave of absence my last year, and been doing this ever since. My advisor gave me the best advice. 
And the advice was, you never know if you're supposed to be doing stand-up comedy if you don't go for it full time. So it was a day, and it was the best day of my life, and I went to open mic and I won three weeks in a row, and Mo was like, keep going for it, girl, keep going for it. So here I am.